writer friends! This is my first ever collaboration video. Woohoo! <laughs> Big thanks to T.A. Hernandez for doing this with me. On this channel, I am going to share my five lessons that I've learned while self publishing. And on her channel, she will also sh share <laughs> five lessons she's learned. So after you watch this video, go ahead and check hers out. And if you already saw hers, welcome to my channel. My name is Michelle Winkler and I'm an indie author in training. I post videos about my self-publishing journey and share some of the mistakes I've made so hopefully you don't have to make them too. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoy this video and consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever I post new content. Now let's get into the video. When I first decided to become an author, I had no idea the amount of time, effort, and knowledge that went into getting it right. Over the last five years, I've learned a lot of lessons, some of them the hard way. <laughs> this list I'm about to share with you is by no means everything that I've learned, but I tried to pick out some lessons that I think will help you the most if you're just getting started and becoming an author. First. Writing is hard. I mean, sure, there are some days when the words just flow and it seems easy. But I've heard writing is hard time and again from authors as kind of a half joke. But when it comes to writing an entire novel, it's definitely true. I will rephrase that slightly though to say writing a good book is hard. Anyone can write 50 or 100,000 lousy words. And there may even be times when you feel like all your writing sucks and you'll never really be good, but that's kind of part of the process. I wrote the first draft for Dust on the Altar in 30 days. <laughs> it was during NaNoWriMo, bleh, NaNoWriMo 2015. That's thunder. Oh great, okay. I kind of shocked myself by writing that many. Um, 50,000 words. Then came the editing phase and I realized how much work it was going to take to turn something that came out so easily into something that was actually worth reading. Years later, in the midst of what I lovingly call the spaghetti swamp of revision sadness, I seriously considered quitting. In the end, I'm so glad I kept going, and now I understand when you're struggling to find the right words, that's part of the process. It's something you need to go through. If it was easy, everyone would do it. Your first draft is probably gonna suck. <laughs> Everyone's first draft is horrible. Yes, even the author you idolize and has found success beyond your wildest dreams. The books you read from them are their final product. Their first draft of that wonderful book was probably cringeworthy. But that's the good news. If you look over your first draft and think it's so bad it shouldn't see the light of day, you should remind yourself that it's just a first draft. It's supposed to suck. If it's a story you love, take some time away from it and then come back and break out your red pen and get to work. You'll probably find after a couple rounds of edits that it's something you actually want to show to people. Even if you don't think your first draft needs editing, trust me, it does. One of the biggest mistakes I made was sending my first draft to a professional editor. Developmental editors can help with the early stages of a story, but mine had only just been spell checked. If I had spent some time going over the story with self-edits, I might have noticed there were some general errors like head hopping and saved myself a lot of money trying to fix a, fix a story that wasn't ready for a pro. Even if you're a pantser, you may need an outline. Now hear me out on this. In case you don't know, a pantser is someone who doesn't outline but just writes by the seat of their pants. By that definition, you would think I'm wrong about needing an outline. And there are some pantsers who would agree with you. But I believe even the barest bones of an outline can be really useful, even for pantsers. I'd written short stories and poems before, but they did not prepare me for the amount of memory and endurance needed to finish a full-length novel. I'm not saying poetry or short stories are easy. <laughs> They're not. But you don't have to remember in chapter 30 something that you mentioned way back in chapter 2. The good news is it can be done, at least with a lot of editing. Or an outline. Now, every story needs editing, but if you don't outline, you're going to spend a lot more time in the editing phase. Some writers are fine with that, but for me it was torture. With the second book, I decided to make an outline, just a real simple one, and it's helped me out a lot. I still get to pants my way through it, <laughs> but when I get stuck or I'm not sure what to write next, the outline is there to help me get back on track. 
After all, an outline is never written in stone. It's simply a guideline that you can change if you need to. You're gonna need a thick skin or every bit of feedback is gonna hurt. Now everyone gets negative feedback sometimes and that's okay. It's not everyone's gonna like your book just like you don't like every book you read. I've been lucky so far that I haven't suffered a virtual attack of negativity, but I know it's coming. The internet is full of people who are in pain and the only way they think that they can deal with it is to inflict pain on others. But I have a plan for when that happens. It's the same plan I use for dealing with the constructive negative criticism that I've received so far. In my last video on giving and getting negative feedback, I went over this in detail, but let's just say in general, it all re <laughs> revolves around your mindset. I remind myself that A, my work is not me, B, I didn't write my book for everyone, and negative feedback shows me what I need improving so I can be a better writer. There's nothing really wrong with being emotionally invested in your work. I think that's part of what makes us good writers. But when you're receiving negative feedback, it can really help if you can distance yourself a bit from the story. You'll wear lots of different hats. What do I mean by hats? <laughs> Self-publishing a book takes more than just writing skills. You're basically a business. You are the creative, marketing, and managerial leader of a team of one. That means you have to wear lots of different hats, as it were. You have to take on lots of different responsibilities and be able to switch between them easily. For instance, writing is a very creative process, but when you go to market your book, you need to think strategically. You need to consider things like your ideal reader and what's good for your overall business. Then you'll have to probably hire professionals at some point which means managing them so schedules coincide and they understand what's expected of them. When I first started learning about all the things I needed to be responsible for, I really struggled. <laughs> As someone who suffers from ADHD, I have a real difficulty keeping to a schedule, prioritizing, and being consistent. I still struggle with some aspects. Hello video upload, upload gaps. That's a tongue twister, why did I write that? Hello video upload gaps. In other words, I've missed weeks of not uploading. Anyway, <laughs> I've come to realize that as long as I do try my best, it usually balances things out. For instance, if I'm struggling with one aspect, instead of coming to a complete standstill, I can just switch hats and work on something else. However, it can be a bit overwhelming sometimes, and it's good to remember that you don't have to do everything on your own. Tani goes over this point more in her video. I link that in the description and the end cards, so go check it out after you finish this one. Let me know in the comments what you think of today's video, and if you have any different ways of dealing with some of these issues, go check out Tandy's video, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next time. I'll see you on the next time. I'll see you next time. <laughs>